Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Ken Rainis. Ken, how are you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. So, Did I say your last name okay? Yeah, Rhinus. That's perfect. Rhin, Rhinus. Okay, okay, good. We'll, we'll we'll correct that. We'll edit the my bad pronunciation of that. Hey, man. So I was watching, uh, you know, this awesome shoot off. It, it was in Italy, and there was a guy who looks just like you there, um, and just so impressed with that guy's shooting. You wouldn't happen to know that guy. He's a Kenneth. You know that yeah, that looks. That I don't know if that shooting was impressive, but that's that's typical of me shooting fives and eights and stuff like that. <laughs> I I'm just gonna tell you, I love, yeah, I am so proud of every. I don't even know if I can say that, but I mean, I'm just I am like I, I just you guys are, did such a great job, and you especially uh, went out and represented the U.S. pretty pretty good. And 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 yeah, you probably you probably thought to yourself, I'm sure you thought to yourself, wow, I I can shoot tens and elevens all day long. Uh, but under that a ma- massive amount of pressure, dude, just I'm just amazed that you got you're able to keep it together. So great job and congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, when uh, you know what's funny is I I didn't really feel nervous, but and I ran every shot. But it's like you let it go and you wonder how did heck to just hit right there, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you're holding steady, feeling great, and then what? How does that happen? So, yeah. Uh, Obviously, nerves are at play. You just don't realize it sometimes, you know? Yeah. But, you know, again, it it looked, I mean, as an onlooker and as a, uh, you know, just like an archer, not, you know, very competitive guy, I, I just thought, and I'm sure that the rest of the world thought, pretty amazing, um, pretty pretty spectacular. Just holding it all together, being able to, to make the shot when you need to. Um, I know, again, I, I don't know what I don't know what I know because I would say that you're actually I would actually say it was so good I would I thought you did a fantastic job um, and just getting there so um, you know kudos to you and and I know that you probably have a, a <clears throat> we're going to talk about your regimen and what you did to get ready for that but before we get into that before I get into that I want to know you as an archer what how did you become a traditional archer what's your story. Um. You know, I don't don't have much of a story. I've, I've been uh, hunting with a compound ever since I was a kid. Um, we could hunt at 12 here, so probably around age of 11 or so I started. And uh, it's probably been, uh, I'm, I'm 50, 52 this year. So um, probably 10 or 11 years ago, um, I got kind of kind of bored with uh, compound with the hunting stuff. And uh, I wanted a little more of a challenge, so I, I tried. Uh, I picked up a recurve, a little K mag, and uh, I didn't know what I was buying. I uh, just thought I'll, I'll try something. Well, that bow doesn't really work well with my draw line, but it stacks quite a bit. But uh, I thought it was fun, right? So um, I had this this uh, idea that maybe I would. Um, Try try the traditional stuff, and because uh, there wasn't the pressure to be good with it, then you quickly realize you want to be good with it, and yeah. it snowballs. And yeah, I eventually got into um, competing, and I uh, did pretty well at that um, with uh, ILF recurve stuff. Um, yeah. I, I moved on and progressed, and, and got introduced to different equipment and. Um, switch from uh, right hand to left hand and uh found out i'm i'm left eye dominant so um i was shooting pretty good actually right handed but i kept getting unexplained flyers once in a while and it was my eye even though i didn't i didn't think i saw the arrow you know the, the instinctive shooting yeah my dominant eye would take over and aim it differently mm. and, uh, so that's I, I switched to uh different you know left-handed and uh started competing and I did pretty good. Um, every time I'd get the results, it'd be second place. And uh, 
I'm like, who is this Jim Powell guy? And uh, <laughs> I didn't really know anybody, right? But yeah. uh, I eventually met him because I was like, I had to find this guy. Who, who is this guy? I can't beat him. And uh, yeah, it turns out uh, he's a local guy here, real nice uh, gentleman. And uh, he's a heck of a shot with a bow, right? So yeah. um, a lot of uh, a lot of my progress, I would I would say, uh, is because of him. Um, I was driven to beat that guy, and uh, I practiced harder and harder because I didn't want to beat number two all the time. Yeah, he really pushed me with, and he didn't know it. That's the funny thing, right? Uh, he, he pushed me without knowing it. So now, do you? Yeah, that's, that's me. Have you? Uh, are you naturally competitive? Like, do you play any other sports or do anything else where you're like? ultra competitive or it was just something um, with archery I, i'm competitive in anything i try but um i don't know my, my wife says i always have to be right so <laughs> <laughs> that's a competitive thing too right it's i'm sure I'm, it's a, yeah yeah it's not the safest thing to do with your wife you know you can't let her win oh no, you're time. right yeah but yeah. that's funny <laughs> Hey, dude, and and um, I'm just gonna say it. You're an old dude. You're old. You are. Yeah, old. I started late in life in this traditional stuff. I, I in fact, when I was at uh, Italy, I was looking around. And I thought, man, I would have loved to have been doing this when I was, you know, in the early 20s. Those, those guys are just, you know, they're athletes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you are too. I mean, honestly, again, I go back to the fact that you are a sniper um I, I just absolutely love watching you and especially you're 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 competing in italy you're competing in trad i know that you do bare bow as well is that correct yeah yeah but you were competing in trad um and which was it's a it's a tough that's a tough uh road to hoe and i'm i'm only joking you know i think i i outrank you by two years uh in age but uh but yeah it seems like there's a lot of young guys coming up and a lot of young women um yeah for sure it's good yeah. to see. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good to see. I mean, the popularity of the sport is one of the things I'm trying to do on this channel. One of the things I'm trying to do with Quick Shots is just kind of give a voice to guys like you that are really super experienced and the new the new people that are just uh, uh, getting started and getting going. Um, so I, I talked to Steph Kaur, uh this morning, and she's going to give you up on the our, our, our uh, um, uh, podcast as well. Dude, I... I got to, you know, after the interview and all that stuff was over, I said, so how was Italy? You know, what was it like? And she's like, I hated it. I hated it. Is, is that, that it again? She said, I hate it. I hated it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got to ask Ken about this. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what was your experience there? Um, so my wife asked me what, what the best part of the trip was. And I told her the water pressure in the shower. I, I was amazed that it felt like a garden, like not a garden, it was like a fire hose is being shot at you. We were on a, a hill and uh, I guess they used the mountain as a pressure source to yep. like, store the water way up high. And it was just amazing to me. I, I come home searching like if I could find like secondary pumps to, to make my house do that. It was just, I thought that was pretty cool. As far as everything else there, um, it, it was very difficult because you don't know the language, right? So. Um, it was very tough. I, I tried to order uh, coffee. I know. Yeah, tell the story. It's a good one. This is a good story. It was on your Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Yeah. So I'm trying to relate to her. I want a coffee. And she literally uh, puts a little plate and a spoon and asks if I want water with it. And I'm like, I, just, I, want, I want coffee to go. And so she literally puts it in a little shot glass like this. Like, like a Dixie cup that you would have for mouthwash. Yeah. And I said, you have something like bigger, you know, like I want a large. And she has a cup about, you know, this big, like we don't even have, our smalls aren't even that small here, right? Dude, and I if said, you yeah. would have, yeah. If you would have <laughs> got a large nice. espresso, like eight shots of espresso, you would never been, oh, that would have been hilarious. That would have been hilarious. But that's funny. So yeah, she poured, she made that and then she poured that other shot into it. And I took it out to the car and I couldn't believe it, you know, how small it was. And 
I started drinking and pretty soon my wife's like, you're all wired up right now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, oh yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, back home, I'll drink, you know, 20, 24 ounces a day, right? Like before on the way to shoot, I'll drink a big coffee like that. Cause it's usually, you know, 45 minutes an hour drive. You are, you are, um, I think you are unique as an athlete to do that though. Do, do you find, uh, cause you know, even Alex Melnick was saying, you know, like I, he forego coffee. I think the whole time he was in Italy. Um, really? Yeah. Because, you know, and I used to competitive rifle shoot too. And they were like, yeah, no, co yeah, no way you're drinking coffee in the morning, even though the matches, all our matches were at like eight 30 and nine o'clock start. Um, yeah. Just cause the elevated heart rate, but you perform on it. So you you're obviously used to it and you're, you're at an age where, you know, no one should be telling you what to do do with what you drink or what you eat well if i don't drink it i get a headache and um i don't notice a difference with it to be honest with you um like we coach uh the nas program the kids in the school oh, nice. and the other coaches will say no energy drinks or nothing like that before the meet and i'm thinking i'd be pounding one <laughs> <laughs> uh it's fine well we grew up i think uh our generation grew up a little bit different i now i don't know like okay in the midwest you can't do this but in canada um you know and, and I, like we were talking just earlier you're out of michigan but i'm just right across the border growing up um we would have tim hortons at you know like six at night seven at night we'd, eat, we'd have coffee after dinner sometimes and um never doesn't affect me the way it affects some people yeah, we didn't we didn't have Tim Hortons when I was growing up. Um, yeah. That was a Canadian thing, apparently. Yeah. But um, yeah. my dad always had the uh, eight pack of uh, glass bottle Pepsi's. Oh, nice! nice. Yeah, we would we drink those like crazy. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. So, um, are you a hunter? I am. I, I uh, I'm getting ready for hunt season, and it starts here October first. Um, I don't, I don't do well at it, but I, I like to try. I like I like getting gear for it, getting ready, right? That's the exciting part. And then season gets here, I'm like, ah, oh, season's over. What, what, what am I going to get to do? You know, what gear am I going to get next year? <laughs> I know, uh, dude. I, I, you were like, we're like uh, kindred souls. Uh, I, shit just keeps showing up at my house, and I, I never get better at, at hunting. <laughs> right. It's like, I got all this cool gear. Uh, I got more things to camouflage. I mean, I don't know. Like, right. And then, uh, and uh, I'm, yeah, I, I have some success, but, but, uh, but you have a shorter season. Well, you have a tougher season than I do in Kansas. We started a week ago um, and you know, it's 110 degrees. <laughs> it's like, and, you know, it'll be all of October will be warm. All of November will be warm where I know you guys in Michigan are just like buried under snow. And like, as soon as December hits, you know, you start getting these really, really cold days. Right. Yeah. It's like, it was like 45 here today around 11 o'clock in the morning. So chilly already. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's brutal. I used to hunt Kansas. Um, I really enjoyed going out there. Um, just never did real well either. So <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your gear down. You can stay with us uh, just to show up. But we're right in Kansas, right just outside of Kansas City. You got lots of room. So um, you don't you don't want to see deer then. That's what you're saying, right? I don't. No, no. I'm, Dude, I'm I'll, change luck. Luck. I'll change your luck. I'll change your luck. I got, I'll change your luck. I'll change your luck. I, I, uh, I, Everybody I, says that. And then I show up. They're like, this is the worst hunting I've ever had here. I swear to you. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it follows me like a bubble. <laughs> you well, gotta stop you, it's that it's that um it's that uh high karate that you're still wearing uh, right <laughs> boy if i told you some of the extremes i went to i used to believe in some of that stuff i stopped using uh any uh cologne for like three months i stopped eating meat three months before season wow i went through all that stuff and it didn't change anything oh, and then i got uh trail cameras and i realized look at that there's nothing out there <laughs> I'm waiting for what isn't there. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stupid too. I got two trail cameras up. I haven't seen, I saw one little doe on it and I'm still hunting that same spot. <laughs> like there's nothing there, dude. Just give it up. I, I don't know. Um, maybe I can call them in or something. I, I don't know. Hey, anyway, so, so nothing about us being terrible hunters. Um, 
Oh, when, so your boat. Let's talk about some of the equipment you used while you're at uh, uh, at Worlds. So uh, I was using a 25 inch border riser okay. out of Scotland, yep. and uh, that was custom built for me uh, a few years ago for Canada, and uh, it shoots great. Um, I was I switched to um, Victory Arrows this year, which is uh, the 3DHV. Yep. And they're lighter than uh, border allows. So I equipped down the border limbs and picked up uh, some MK Zest. Yeah, some Zest. So nice. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're working pretty good for me for indoor last year. Um, so that's what I, I took there. I, I typically will use a border or a yucca. And uh, I just struggled before I went there. Um, I'm sending pictures to uh, Ryan Davis and Dwayne Martin. I'm like, what, what's going on? I'm, I'm shooting groups like this. Um, trials, I had the yukas. I was hitting like six to eight inches to the left. Mm -hmm. So I figured out on the second day the, the hold off. And so if the animals were facing right, I'd aim at the front of their chest. And it would hit back and hit like edge of the town or eight. If they were aiming, if they were face left, I would just try to gut shoot them and it would put it right in the lobby. So, <laughs> so I, I got through trials with that, but then I came back here and I was struggling hitting left and I started struggling hitting right and I just, I couldn't figure anything out. Um, so I tried the Zest Andor ones and, and they grouped better than the other ones, um, than the Yucas. So that's what I went with. So those are probably 36 to 38 pounds at 30 inches. I okay. was shooting the 500 spine 3 DHVs with 120 grains up front with okay. the excess wings. Uh, and I took two sets. I had a, a brand new set that were uncut and I had cut ones. I didn't know which ones were gonna work better for me when I went to uh, Italy. I just, I ran out of time. You were shooting, even, vein, you were shooting veins off the shelf? Off of a Hoyt uh, stick on rest. Oh, so you can use a stick on rest. I didn't know that. You can you can use a stick on, but it can't be like a Shibuya or anything. It has to right. be a non-adjustable uh, plastic rest. So Hoyt's the one that I choose. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, and then, of course, it poured rain there. So good thing I was shooting veins because the guys with feathers, you know, it wasn't a good day for them. So, yeah, that was my setup. I had uh, I even tried outserts because... You know, I found out this year, I, I can't see the end of the arrow very well. Yeah, um, well, that's us. That's us. Just man. getting older, you know. Yeah. And so I tried an outsert so I could actually see something there. And um, the day before we left, I tore those off because I shot the ones without the outserts and they were grouping better, but they weren't. <laughs> they were better. Let's just leave it at that, right? They weren't great, but they were better. And then uh, partway through, um, I was practicing and, and uh, I, I qualified with uh, the short ones and I used the long ones for the shoot offs because when I was practicing, I'm like, hey, these are actually shooting better. So I switched arrows again. So that's that's just kind of how I roll. I'm never ready. Just <laughs> improvise. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds to me, it, it sounds to my, in my professional opinion, it sounds like, <laughs> It sounds like you're like a hot and cold water tap. He's like, oh, well, today I'm going to shoot like this. And so I got to adjust my equipment. <laughs> and the next day I'm going to shoot my... It's funny. it's funny. The local guys would be like, what bow are you shooting today? And oh, just one I put together last night looks right, you know. And I just, I tried different things. And um, I really believe that uh, you shouldn't be afraid to change. Change is good. Every, every time you change something on your bow, I don't know if you've noticed or not, it works amazing, right? Yeah, for like a couple of days, and then then the honeymoon's over, right? Yep. yep. Well, that's your mind's getting put back into learning mode, and you hyper focus and everything. So every time you make a change, I think that that helps you get better at this game. So that's that's one of my tricks I do. I change stuff all the time. That... Always looking for an extra point or two, right? I mean, that's that's my game. So, but it keeps you on top of your mental game, I think. So, so of, so what have you? What, what are some of the accomplishments you've had? So T Team USA, obviously. 
Yeah, in, in 2019, I got uh, the silver medal in Canada. Nice. Um, that's been my biggest one. Uh, Italy, I was fourth place. Um, got a few local records. Um, I only do 3D and uh, a little bit of indoor stuff. I won indoor nationals in the uh, trad class last year down in, uh, what is it, Kentucky down there? Yeah. It was my first time going there. It went pretty well. So. Wow. Wow. Have you ever shot Lancaster? Yeah, I have. You know what? The first year I shot there, I come in eighth place. And I oh. think they were taking like the top six guys. <laughs> oh. And then, and then I, I come in seventh place the next year. And I'm like, here we go. I'm going to be sixth. And the next year didn't go as well. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good time. Though. I really enjoy that shoot um, because you're just qualifying so the first two games they don't mean that much there's not a lot of pressure but the shoot offs like the eliminations those just get you fired up that's that's the yeah. best thing it, you don't have to be the best there to do well right so you can make the cut and then it's you're always shooting you know four ends or something or three arrows and something like that somebody will correct me i'm sure but it's yeah. not very many arrows and and you can run into somebody that just takes you out just that quick so it's it's a cool uh cool game i like it there yeah yeah it, it's tough man I, all archery is kind of tough <laughs> i mean it, it's a, it is a hard game I, you know i usually ask you know people our guests to to say what's one of those pieces of advice that you would give someone um that they would immediately get better like it was a little trick or something that you have but that whole changing things up i mean it so goes against the grain of what people have told people what, what we've been told over the years and years and years, like I always get shit from like the old guys will be like, what bow are you shooting? What bow are you shooting today, Mick? Because you're right. never going to get, you're never going to get good if you keep shooting all these different bows. And so I've kind of gone away from like, I, I have one, I have one bow for hunting and one bow for indoor outdoor. Um, I'm still no good, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would you? No, I hear you. So that's, that's part of the problem with, uh, the class that uh, I shoot at Worlds, um, we don't really have a class back here at home that allows us to use that same equipment. Hmm. In Europe, it's very popular, but here we don't have that, that sort of class. So I can shoot it in bare bow, but if you try to shoot that against guys that um, can string walk, it's it's tough to compete. I mean, yeah. I do all right locally, but on a big event, it's tough to beat those guys. Yeah. So I don't really shoot that bow. I'll shoot bare bow. And I just pick that bow up, you know, every other year to when this, this shoot comes around, I'll, I'll pick it up and start shooting it. But um, that's tough because you, you have to relearn the grip and blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a pain. So, what, uh, yeah. And so, and you had a specially made bow uh, for you. So, uh, and I guess you can, you get your bare bow rig, you can put whatever grip you want on there, but you have to get you really used to that border. Yeah. You, you do you get the grip you want on the border one i i have uh there's internal weights in that riser so uh technically most of the rules say you can't have any in, internal weights so i can't shoot it in like a track class even though oh, oh here at home go, yeah here at home you can you know shoot a 25 inch metal riser but you can't shoot a wood one that's got got internal weights way. internally into it so it just it doesn't fit in anything so we i don't shoot it so it's tough but um <clears throat> I enjoy it when I do pick it up. It's it's a it's a fun bow. It uh, I want to say fully strong and everything. It weighs around six pounds or a little bit better. So it's it's got some mass to it. Yeah, that's that's a heavy bow. That's pretty good. I guess in it and that's really useful for when you're shooting uh, for score. Hey, um, what about when you go out for hunting? What are you using? So for hunting, I use a 21 inch uh, Border Tempest. Mm -hmm. uh, the metal riser from Scotland. Yeah. And one of the reasons I chose that was because my bare bow is a 27 inch tempest. So I wanted to have that same geometry and feel. So it was a seamless transition from hunting, you know, from shooting all summer bare bow, then to hunting and then back in the winter for indoor, it was all the same kind of geometry, just different length like riser. And it works out pretty well for that. Yeah. If you ever get shot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I'm better off taking a camera. It's less bulky. 
<laughs> at least you get some pictures of birds and stuff. That's right? Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's funny, man. Uh, um, yeah, it's killing me this year. You know, I've been out t- uh, two, three times now, and nothing. I got nothing. Hey, so, so what is up next for you? What What are you thinking you're gonna do? What's the next What's the next competition? Um, so locally, uh, I'll probably start indoor stuff. Um, I think some of it starts in December. They typically have uh, 3D. Um, I don't typically do that because it doesn't feel like 3D to me. You're indoors and you're shooting mm-hmm. across lanes. and I, I don't, don't really enjoy that as much, um, but I do enjoy shooting the spot stuff. So we kind of uh, start off with uh, the FIDA stuff and then transition to the uh, five spot and FAA stuff. And we've got some local organizations that put on um, like semi-weekly shoots, you, you can pretty much, you know, spend, I think it's eight bucks or something and you compete with, uh, you know, whoever shows up type thing. And it's mostly compound guys, but we got a pretty good group of traditional and bearable guys that show up and it's a good time. You get to sit there and talk with people, you know, in between ends and stuff. And the weather's always nice indoors, even if it sucked getting there, but <clears throat> that's a good time. So that's probably what I'll start doing. Um, I'd like to go back to Lancaster. Um, I just, my buddies were like, you know, who's in on an Airbnb? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm eating tomorrow. I don't know anything about Lancaster. I, I don't plan that far ahead. And yeah. Some of my friends have their calendars booked already. I, I don't do that. Um, yeah. You remind me and I'll, I'll show up type thing. So. Dude, you, are they Gen Xers too? Because I I'm, I feel the same way. I'm like I try and get organized. I just can't do it. I just can't. some are some are like Steve Oakley. Uh, oh, yeah, he's a, a local guy now, and he's he's smashing targets left and right. But yeah, he's he's I'm sure he's playing for the next year or two. He just he, he gets into that. I I don't I don't know. I just show up. Well, that's good, man. I mean, that's I, you you have the personality. It, it seems that to be a very even keel, you know, keep your, your uh, emotions in check, especially while you're uh, shooting. That's pretty good. That's that, that, that builds a good archer, a uh, good competitor. Cause it's a Hopefully. lot of pressure on the line. It's a lot of pressure. And so people with your, your stability are good. That's awesome, man. Um, anything else? So you want to give a shout out to what's your local club? My local club is uh, Livingston County uh, sportsman's club. Um, the only, the only person there that, uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a bunch of Olympic recruiters there that are awesome, but, uh, Scott Bills, uh, he joined the club. So I shoot with him, uh, awesome. off and on there and he's a good competitor for indoor stuff for sure. Yeah. Have you ever been coached? Um, <clears throat> I've tried several different coaches, um, throughout the years and they'll watch me shoot and they'll say, you shoot great and i'm like no you're you're looking you're you're a typical archer you're looking down range and not looking what you're doing yeah and uh so i met a, a local guy here uh, brandon wright and uh he's a competitive compound shooter and he's also a level four coach and he owns uh, rising phoenix archery and they're over in Troy, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I asked him if I could uh, book him for a lesson. And uh, I went over there and uh, I didn't realize how nervous I make kids because he was doing the same thing to me that I do to kids. And I was like, what are you doing? You know, like, he's getting, like real close and like yeah. looking for creep and stuff. And yeah, I was nervous as hell. I couldn't believe it, right? But uh, he was pointing out things. I'm like, he pointed out things that I know are flaws, but nobody knows if that makes any sense to you. And oh, like, he oh, sees you know, it. He sees those. He things. does. Yeah. And so real sharp guy. And, and uh, I've been to him a couple of times. I probably should go more, but um, I've only been out there a couple of times. So he's, he's very knowledgeable. And it's just a matter of, of uh, going out there. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a drive from here. So um, it's not right next door. You just got to plan it. But uh yeah, I, I would uh, definitely send, and I have some people out to him. I mean, that's that's a good place to go to learn. So, it's awesome, man. Yeah. Right. Do you have one piece of advice that you want to give anyone that you know something that is going to immediately change their game? 
immediately change their gene. Sure, maybe. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Well, my philosophy is you don't have to do it right. You just have to do it the same every time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's um, true. I, I go against all, all the grain. Um, guys will uh, talk about like expansion and getting in their back. And I don't do that. Um, I, I tried a little bit of that in Italy and it was working for a while. And then I thought, well, what if I expand too hard? You know, when you get under nerves and pressure, I never knew what people meant by a tune for practice and a tune for um, competition and how they can vary. Well, that's how it's varying is you get nervous and you change tension and stuff. So I don't do that. Um, I relax at full draw and, you know, everybody says I creep and yeah, I do. I, my kid, yeah, you're creeping again, dad. And yeah, well, that's how I shoot, right? So I just kind of relax and let things happen. So um Chad's a little bit more like lobbing the arrow into the target. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can just kind of go, is... I'm a little too high here, so I'm going to creep a little bit and let it go and take some feet per second off. So I, I honestly believe that's true. Um, I use Joel Turner's um, method of shooting with the grips here. Oh, okay. In the game. Yeah. And, and I honestly believe when you see me holding long, it's because my subconscious says that slight pitcher ain't right, dummy. So it starts collapsing until it gets right. And then it yeah. goes off and it hits. I mean, it's just amazing. Some shots will go off that fast. And it's because it was right. Yeah. I think my mind stops my finger moving and says, no, no, you don't have it exactly right there. And other times I'll force it through and be like, there you go. It was a bad shot. So, yeah. Hey, can I ask you a really obscure question here? And and it's it's all to do with me. No, it's it, hey, it's my show. I can do whatever the hell I want. So that's right here. Yeah. Um, how do you grip the string? Which day? Yeah, I exactly. Mean, I, right. I mean, but I want to know. Like, is is there a way that you like more consistent? You find I yourself. Know, I, change, I change things a lot. Um, yeah. It sounds like so. That. It depends on the bow. So if I'm shooting um, the bare bow, I use a lower anchor. I'll actually get on a tooth, right? Yeah. And I hold that different. But if I'm shooting the um, the world archery bow, I can feel a divot right here, mm -hmm. where like your gums, you feel. Yeah. A bump oh yeah, I feel that. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. That's my anchor. So if I'm having a loose anchor, I don't feel that. So I actually have to. I actually have to really curl in tight a deep yeah. hook, and then I can put that finger right there. So okay. I shoot a deep deep hook for that bow, and I shoot a more relaxed hook for the, the bare bow stuff. That's and I play cool. around with different pressures. I think more on the top than the bottom is better, but it depends on the day, really. I, like I said, I change things all the time. I just found a new way how I hold the bow. When I was in Italy, I started was pulling it harder. I'm like, hey, I think I'm getting inside the bow, like they say. So I change stuff all the time. <laughs> it is unbelievable you score so good. I can't believe you. You're you are wrecking my show. I'm trying to give people <laughs> consistently good information that they, you can't just come on here and say, yeah, change shit all the time. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay. You're if the you, only one saying that. If I didn't change anything, I would have been. I wouldn't have made the team this year, right? I, I realized that I could not get the bow to hit straight down the middle, so I had to start aiming off. And yeah, I mean, you just do what you got to do, right? So I was even changing tape, trying to get the rest shim, thinking that would help. Nothing was helping. There's something going on. It's just it's weird. My daughter, my daughter said, "Dad, you know why you can't hit nothing? You're going to Italy. That's why. It's just nerves, right? You don't realize it, but just you're building up stress for no reason." So smart kid. Yeah, they can see. Kids can see it. Um, animals can see it too. <laughs> you got your little bit of stress. You know, I I think that's amazing. And your your father. So you got a, a your your a daughter and a, a son. Is that right? Correct. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. And how old are they? My daughter's seventeen, and my son's nineteen. Yeah, we're the same. So my daughter, I have two daughters, nineteen and eighteen. She's eighteen now, so it's kind of closer. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, they're, they're, they're a source of my stress, but they're in college now. So that's, they're fine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I still, mine's in high school. It's their uh, final year. So 
Yeah, get them out of get them out of the house, man, as soon as you can. Uh, no, kidding. I love my kids. <laughs> they watch this sometimes, so I, gotta, <laughs> I love them. I wish they were here right now. Actually, hey, if people want to um, find you somewhere online, say hi to you, ask you for some tips on trad shooting, or want to know more about uh, traditional shooting at world archery, or uh, even barebow, um, how can they get hold of you? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, I'm an open book. I'll help anybody. Um, on Facebook, it's it's my name. Okay. Um, Above just your, above your head. Yeah. Um, and online, um, I don't know if anybody goes to websites anymore. I used to go to websites all the time. It was KENN 1320, which I used to drag race all the time. I guess that was my other hobby. That's cool. Um, yeah. So I'm available on Facebook. I, I try to do Instagram or whatever. I don't know. I think. I don't know. I'm not good at that stuff. So. <laughs> I ask my kids what what I'm doing, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you know when um, you know, Instagram is kind of good. I I'm not I'm not sponsored by Instagram, but <laughs> but but you know it's like if you post on Instagram, it, mine just goes to my Facebook page. So, oh, I does it? Do, I just do one place, and I don't like the all the stuff that goes on on Facebook. To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan. So I just like posting pictures and people saying oh that's cool or not cool or whatever and then it's fine um yeah on my timeline i try to keep it all archery stuff um i comment on other people's posts you know and other things but i try to keep mine clean because they're you know obviously the kids i coach will be looking around and stuff like that too and i want to set good examples so yeah try to keep it archery yeah well thanks for uh helping our youth man i really appreciate that it's awesome i enjoy it. it's a good time all right, brother. Uh, thanks very much for uh, joining us. And I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your schedule and, uh, you know, best of luck, you know, in the future. I mean, I don't know if you need it because this is, I don't know what that would do for you to give you luck because you're just kind of like, I'm going to change it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, thanks for the advice, Nick. It worked. I'm, I'm going to change. <laughs> I'm starting to learn what my dad meant by I'll forget. I forgot more than you ever learned and because that's true. You know, you'll end up something will work and, and our minds are so efficient at, at skipping steps. Right. So yeah. you'll you'll relearn things You're like, duh, you know, I was doing that last year. Why did I stop? You just don't realize you kind of you, you transform as the season goes on. Right. So I, I find that with all with our tree, everything I you know, it's yeah. I almost feel like I got to take notes. Like, okay, I shot Crazy. really good groups this, the, t you know, today. And this is what I changed. And then I'll come back the next day and I'll, I'll shoot. I'm being, I I'm shit. And then I'll go back. Then I'll go. Then I'll remember the next day. I'm like, oh yeah. Remember when I, remember when I had this, you know, a little bit more tilt in my head. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Go back to it and I'll be good. And I'll be like, anyway, no. You know, it's, it, it's funny you say that, Mac, because, um, I was talking to a compound shooter. That's mostly what we have here. He was talking about how he relaxes his bow shoulder. Mm -hmm. So I tried it with my recurve and I was killing it. I have never shot so good. I even had my wife or my daughter come out and videotape and I said, I'm relaxing, just totally letting this just clash, just yeah. let it do its own thing. I videotaped it. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't want to forget, because just like what you just said, right? Yeah. yeah. For the next week and a half, I could hardly move my arm. I'm like, that was the wrong <laughs> thing to do. Because it tears the so muscle up. It, it was it, stretching tendons and stuff and did damage. So don't do that. But it's funny how you say that. I was like, I got a videotape because I'll forget this. This is amazing. It'll tear your shoulder up as you get older. Like, that's why the young guys, that's why I said you're old. I mean, I, and I meant, to, I, meant, I meant it in a most loving way possible. But, you oh, know, know, young guys can get away with it. Um as we get a bit older, that tears your shoulder up. I remember, I forget whether it was uh, Kaminsky or whatever, he used to have a really, really low shoulder, um, you know, and they used to show videos of him doing it. I just tore the shit out of his shoulder, and, and he couldn't he couldn't shoot very good afterwards. So My shoulders hurt every day. Even, like, reaching for a seatbelt, my shoulder will hurt just from shooting. I think it's overuse injuries. Yeah, yeah. And just getting old, it sucks. I need to start lifting weights or something. I, I love I love weights like free weights. Yeah. Until I have to move them, then I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I guess they. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they young. I don't. But I don't believe. Like honestly, I don't believe that fifty is. 
I remember when my dad was 50. Like he was way older than me, way older than me. <laughs> and I'm 53, you know, and he was older than me when he was 50. It just, it just feels that way. <laughs> anyway, we go on and on and on. Hey, I want to um, thank you. Sure. I want to thank you for uh, being on again, and I want to thank our sponsors, and I want to tell people, you can get Archery Geek shirts and stuff if you're listening. Uh, just hit the link below. Uh, it helps out the channel, and I, I do appreciate it, and thanks very much for uh, sticking around. Hunt the good stuff, everyone. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.